After the First World War was over, Germany found itself in pretty dire circumstances. It no longer had a Kaiser and so had to determine what sort of government it was going to have, it was facing economic, political and military disaster and also it had to conform to the Treaty of Versailles. Which saw Germany lose these lands, restricted the size of its military, prevented said military from being stationed in the Rhineland which was also occupied and importantly ordered the payment of huge reparations. After the German revolution in the wake of its capitulation was defeated, Germany emerged as a democratic republic and one whose economy was basically in the toilet. Because the Allies didn't value the German currency, the Papier Mark, it was demanded in 1921 that these reparations be paid in other ways, either in gold or in foreign currencies, and if either of those weren't viable, in raw materials. The German government, at this point led by Josef Verf, had a great idea. Let's just print more money with which we can buy more foreign currency to pay the Allies. What could go wrong? Anyway, even with this foolproof, economically viable approach of simply just having more money, Germany kept falling behind on its payments, which upset the French and the Belgians who wanted their money because of the horrors that they had to endure during the First World War. Yet the British and the Americans argued for the reparations to either be halted or reduced since Germany likely couldn't pay them. France had put pressure on Britain to aid it in sanctioning Germany for missed payments, but the British refused. Furthermore, in April 1922, Germany and the USSR signed the Treaty of Rapallo, which ended both states' international isolation and also terrified the French. In November of the same year, Germany failed again to deliver a shipment of raw materials to France. And so, the French Prime Minister and former President Raymond Poincaré opted to take firm action. In early 1923, French troops moved into this area called the Ruhr Valley, which included major cities like Dusseldorf and Dortmund and contained a great deal of Germany's industrial might. There were several reasons why France opted to occupy these lands. The first was that France needed the money. France had debts to the United States and needed German reparations in order to pay them. Another reason was that France, along with Belgium, was utterly terrified of a resurgent Germany and felt that any breach of the Treaty of Versailles should be met with firm action. Now, France's invasion was met with anger in Germany, whose government declared a state of emergency. It urged those living there to passively resist the French by simply refusing to work. No workers in the factories meant no output, which meant France and Belgium would get exactly nothing. In order to aid the workers who would be on strike, the government promised to pay their wages, which they would do by simply printing more money. Now, not all citizens were content to get on with their daily lives and ignore the French, and there were often clashes between the French soldiers there and the Ruhr's inhabitants. This sometimes led to French troops killing civilians, which saw global opinion change, and many began to see France as the largest threat to the new European peace. Britain was particularly critical of the occupation and Franco-British relations were damaged severely. When Britain's first Labour Prime Minister, Ramsay MacDonald, came to power in 1924, he was extremely critical of the French. And he held the London Conference, which saw Britain negotiate an end to the ongoing crisis. In the end, the French folded on everything and agreed to leave the Ruhr within a year and to take no more money from the area. It also agreed to the American Doors Plan, which reduced Germany's war reparations and dealt with the ongoing hyperinflation crisis there. Which is what happens when governments simply try to print more money forever. Anywho, France left the Ruhr Valley in 1925, having failed to achieve any of its goals. In the end, its fears of a resurgent Germany, able to willingly violate the Treaty of Versailles, were realised. Germany and Britain saw France as a destabilising and aggressive force in Europe, and both would see their foreign policies affected by this. And whilst no one can be said to have won the Ruhr Crisis, it seems pretty certain that France lost it. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching with the special thanks to my Patreon supporters who you can see on screen here. And with an extra special thanks to James Bizanet, David Archaeologist, Party Boyko, Danny Maloney, Colin Castleman, Rob Waterhouse, Aaron the White, Michael Reynolds, Urchway and Emperor, Chris Wicker, Gustav Swan, Gareth Turner, Spinning Three Plates, David Silverman, Winston Kaywood, Maggie Pakskowski, Christian Cheke, Anthony Beckett, Robert Wetzel, Sky Chappelle and Ike.